Hello and welcome to The Hearing. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's album, which is the self-titled debut album by Fake Names. Fake Names are a punk supergroup. Uh, the band initially formed in early 2016 when guitarist Brian Baker from Minor Threat, Dag Nasty, and of course Bad Religion, and Michael Hampton uh, from SOA, Embrace, and One Last Wish, who had known each other since first grade, <laughs> met up at Hampton's Brooklyn home to play music together with no intention beyond possibly writing you know, a song or two. But after writing a handful of songs, they closed out the session with a spur-of-the-moment decision to start a band. Um, <laughs> they recruited bassist Johnny Temple from Girls Against Boys and Soulside, who was another fellow student of their elementary school, <laughs> uh, and, and shared their passion for what Temple refers to as loud, angry, visceral music. By the end of the year, they had re uh, enlisted refused vocalist Dennis Lixon, um, thus cementing the lineup. Um, Fake Names is their eponymous debut album. I always love using that word when I can. Um, right. It was released on May 8th, 2020 on Epitaph Records, co-produced by Michael Hampton and Jeff Sanoff, and features the aforementioned lineup with additional musician Matt Schultz on drums. They don't actually have an official drummer, a punk band who doesn't have an official drummer. Huh. Um, on to the tracks, of course. Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our episodes for copyright reasons, but down in the description... Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or um, on our blog at johnandscotto.com, you'll find links to the album on Spotify and YouTube, so you can listen along if you'd like. Um, on to track one, All for Sale. Uh, this one has been stuck in my head for days. It's uh, It was kind of surprising that they weren't, I mean, as loud and, and as it's aggressive. Not, as it's the... not really a punk album. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's... <laughs> Uh, the, I like the lead guitar in this. It has like um, it had, but it has more of a like an arena classic rock kind of sound to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of straight up alt rock. Reminds me a lot of Drama Rama. Yes. Um, yes. I, I mean, they're doing like the very you know power pop. You know. Mm -hmm. I love the verse, the, the groove in the verse. Um, Lixon reminds me a lot of like a '90s goth alt singer. Yes. He's got that big, deep voice. Yes, there's one track where he really does the mm -hmm. Joy Division echo yeah. Morrissey. Uh, um, love the backwards guitar in ver just before the second verse and the timing change going into the bridge and the lack of a guitar solo. So refreshing to not have a guitar solo. <laughs> Particularly in this band where I know specifically in Bad Religion, guitar solos exist to give um, Greg Graff in a break. <laughs> that makes sense because he's usually singing furiously. Mm -hmm. um, on to track two, Driver. Love the groove on this one. It feels very 70s. Um, yeah. Something about the guitar tone on this and a few other songs reminds me a bit of Rush. Rush, huh? There's just the guitar sound they use. Reminds me of Rush. Um, great melodies and harmonies in the chorus. Um, one of my favorites, I'll say, not my absolute favorite. I had to go through a, a, a few of them. Um, love the snare sound on the bridge. And we do get a guitar solo in this one, but it's nice and short and melodic. As they should be in this genre. Yeah. Um, on to track three, Being Them. Love the opening riff. This one feels very bad religion. I, yeah, I was thinking they were going for a Nirvana kind of vibe to it. Only, of course, we you know, with the better mm -hmm. singer. Yeah. But anyway. Um, uh, <laughs> and Lixon's music, or well, Lixon's voice in this kind of music is a nice change. Um, because he has that 80s feel to him. Um, he really goes from, you know, emotive, just belting it out. Yeah. And then moving to a robotic kind of uh, delivery mm -hmm. in the same thing. To, it's a good contrast. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually was dancing to this one. Um, <laughs> Love the harmony riff during the solos. It just had such a great groove. Um, on to track four, Brick. This is my pick for weakest. Yeah, I didn't know if we were going to get a Ben Folds cover or something mm -hmm. about where I'm from. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's just like it's it's the most punk on the album, but it's yeah. just not quite fast enough to be hardcore. And this um, was a single, wasn't it? Yeah, one of the singles. Um, I'm not sure if this was really single material, yeah. honestly, compared to the rest of the album. Um, the lyrics are just kind of repetitive. It's just, you know, you'll be first up against the wall when the revolution comes. 
Yeah. Um, nice gallop. I, I did like the uh, the high guitar stabs on the right. Mercifully, it's the shortest song on the album. <laughs> um, on to track five, Darkest Days. Um, this, this is, is my where favorite. He, he gets the... Uh... You know, and I say echo because I think of mm-hmm. an episode of The Young Ones where, right. you know, the anarchist has to write to the lead singer of Echo and the Bunny Men. And... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dear Echo. <laughs> um, love the insistent groove and the riff very much reminds me of Rush, uh, but with a very 90s feel. Love Lixon's voice on this one. Um, kind of reminds me of either Peter Murphy or uh, Bill Wadhams from Man in Motion. Hmm. He's got that low, you know, kind of gothy sound to him. I just really think Enjoy Division. Okay, yeah, yeah, that works too. And I, the name, his name, yeah, I can't really think of it either. Me um, right now. The great, you know, lead yeah, singer from Enjoy Division. Oh no, the singer, um, not the bassist. Um, Peter Hook is the bassist. Um, yeah, um, I can't think of the name of the singer. Yeah, or yeah, um, it's just too late in the day. Right, <laughs> I, I got sorry, a lot of Peter Murphy from it though. Uh, from Bauhaus. <laughs> um. I love the verse melody. It's just this great moody feel. They bring in the ooze in the chorus, which if Brian, if a member of Bad Religion plays in the band, you need those background harmonies. <laughs> um, loved the lead part during the bridge and a nice melodic solo. Ian Curtis. Oh, oh okay. Division. I knew Curtis was in there somewhere. I couldn't remember. I, knew, I had Ian. I just didn't <laughs> we, know. we both had half of it. Let's <laughs> say Ian Drury, but that's you know, um, sex and yeah, drugs yeah. and rock and roll. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like I said, it's too late, people. <laughs> right, right. Um, this is going to be a very short episode, by the way. We're more we're like halfway through, and it's only six minutes. Wow, in, that's kind in. of that's kind of how the album went. You know, it's a very it's it's, kind it's of, a mercifully short album. After it just run right through it. The fucking epics no... we've had lately. That's true. That's true. <laughs> this was a nice breather after the early nineties. Uh, that's why I wanted singles. to put this one in like right when we came back because it's under a half hour. <laughs> Nice, you know, short, short movie, short movie. It was like under an hour and a half. Nice short album. Uh, good week to come back to. Anyway, on to track six, Heavy Feather. Um, there's a guitar sound in the intro and between the verses that sounds either like a synth or a sax. I thought it was a keyboard. You think I'm it's a guitar? I'm pretty sure it was a guitar. Um, and you're not expecting that poppy keyboard sound, you know, after mm-hmm. a Joy Division song for yeah, yeah. after Bob's. I'd love to know if they ran it through. Um, this one has a nice kind of off kilter groove. Um, it's a nice Oz in the chorus in the verse again. Um, it's a very very heavy Cars influence. Yeah. You know, I I thought I'd heard it slightly on earlier tracks, but this one there's like no mistake yeah, that yeah. they're going for like a Cars kind of feel to it. Maybe that's the '80s I'm hearing because I do hear a lot of '80s in their sound. Maybe yes. it's that kind of new wave vibe. Um, I love the chorus melody and how the groove changes, and this is another one I was dancing to. Um, on to track seven, First Everlasting. Another one that reminds me a lot of Dramarama. I'd say this was my, my pick for strongest. Okay. It sounds a lot like a Tin Machine song, actually. Yeah, I get that. Um, this is, considering it's your favorite on the album, um, this note might hurt a bit. Um, I, I have almost feels a bit Springsteen in a good way. Well, I mean, Springsteen had his moments. I won't yeah. deny that. Yeah. I just hate him because of the boomers that tried to force him thing, down yeah. my throat. In right. Jersey, yeah. Um, well, it's the... his fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate Springsteen yeah. <laughs> because of Springsteen right. fans. I mean, That's I never it. really clicked with most of his music, but I don't really have an issue with him. I just have an issue with the people who expect me to like his music because of the state I'm from. I owned Board in the USA back in the day. I'll <laughs> admit that. But the fans are just so goddamn annoying. Right, right. Um, and we get hate emails over this. So be it. Right. It won't be the first and won't be the last. We're both originally from Jersey. I still live here. We were teenagers when Born in the USA came out. I was I was even younger. I think it was like 11. Okay. I, well, I'm, I'm, you couldn't have been that young because I'm only a year and a half older. Um, it was like 84, wasn't it? Was it? Okay. We were preteens, maybe. Um, yeah. But we aren't really that into Springsteen. Um, it's a thing. Um, so many boomers, though. So yeah. many boomers. Because well, that's, that's his era. Right. You know, he was having his resurgence when we discovered him. 
but uh, the the harmonies on this also yeah. are the most bad religionish. Yeah, which I love because I love bad religion. It's kind of that's the other reason why I uh, picked this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also love the layered guitars between the verses. Like, there's two guitar players. There's like four guitar parts going on. I, I would love to hear they, how they're going to pull this off live. Um, on to track eight. This is nothing. Love how high the bass is in the mix on this one. It's all about the bass. No, I was not referencing that song. That was totally accidental. Oh. I'm sorry. Um, and I didn't even realize in my notes when I said I got nothing that the song is actually called This, this is, is Nothing. nothing. Um, love how high the bass is in the mix. Nice, insistent groove. Um, love the, the little descending riff in the chorus. Um, nice vocal harmonies on the outro. Um, on to track nine, Wait. Uh, love the opening riff and the off-kilter groove. Um, another gr- more great harmonies. Um, you got to expect that from him. It's anything connected to Bad Religion. Um, you know, second to the last track on the album. Mm-hmm. It's got a bit more of an epic feel to it. Not yeah. not longer, of course. No, Nothing's no. long. Nothing over... Uh, I think they're all under four minutes. Yeah. I uh, love the change up in the arrangement for verse two. You get that little breakdown in yeah, this. Yeah, how it stops down for the bridge. And he goes very Peter Murphy. Melixon goes very Peter Murphy on the bridge yeah. on this one. Just straight up channels Peter Murphy. Uh, on to track ten, Lost Cause. Another one that's almost hardcore, kind of cowpunk. Mm. If you know what cowpunk is, a mix of country and punk. Right, right. Um, and I, it, I used to listen to Hee Haw Hell back in the day. Mm-hmm. And that two four groove that you get get in a lot of cow, a lot of punk really comes from country and bluegrass. Of uh, ironically, we reviewed a music documentary about a bluegrass band on Somebody <laughs> Takeout this week. Um, that comes from that music. It comes from country and bluegrass. And so for punk- those of you that don't know, Hee Haw Hell was a show on uh, Sirius. Actually, no. When it was just XM Radio. Uh-huh. And they had a channel just for punk rock called Fungus. <laughs> nice. And, it, yeah, they would do... They just did a cowpoke, you know, <laughs> rockabilly yeah. show. Cowpunk. Cowpunk, yeah. Cowpoke is another whole other thing. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, that's like... I swear I wasn't drinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just late. <laughs> right. Um, not, yeah, but the night got a nice cowpunk groove, which I miss because you haven't heard a lot of cowpunk since the 80s, maybe early 90s. Yeah, some Reverend Horton heat. Yeah. Um, love the nice anthemic chorus. It ends the album beautifully. Um, love the line, hold on, got to hold on to this lost cause in the chorus. Oh, yeah. Um, and I love the, the first the riff play on the solo. lost cause at the end. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just good. And calling them, you know, saying you got to hold on to the lost cause on the last song of this side project. Um, <laughs> and I, I say, I love the first riff of the solo because the solo was basically just two different riffs. You, you had one riff, probably Baker, the other one is Hampton. Um, so do you recommend it? Tough one. I was expecting something entirely different than what mm-hmm. I got. Um, it sounds like you enjoyed it, though. I did. I did. There, there were parts where I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I'll recommend it. I definitely recommend it. It's a bit punk, a bit '90s, a little '80s, touch gothy, maybe a little rush. It's pretty much perfect for me. I could have used some more punk. Hmm. And that's it for fake names. You'll get a lot more punk next week because until next time, we'll be reviewing fresh fruit or rotting vegetables by Dead Kennedys. Oh my God. <laughs> Really? Had to put this one first before DK, because I didn't want the uh, the comparison going the other way as much as I love this album. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get to tell my Toys R Us story. <laughs> <laughs> um, until then, of course, always remember to forget wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. <laughs>